Hello everyone, thank you for joining us at our RHB Money Chat series. In current bullish phase of the US equity market, RHB Bank maintains the positive outlook on global equity. However, given the market's volatility, strategically positioning portfolio to increase equity exposure at the opportunity moment is crucial for optimizing overall returns. Today, we have the privilege of hosting Vincent, Deputy Chief Investment Officer and Head of Multi-Asset at Burton Fund Management. A seasoned professional with experience of more than 30 years and career spanning across Trodos Investment Management and in Singapore Government Investment Corporation. His extensive expertise in asset allocation and fund management, coupled with his academic background of degree in business administration and CFA certification, uniquely positioned himself to shed light on the tier total return income strategy and its relevance in the current market climate. Thank you for having me. Happy to join you. Referring to TA Total Return Income Fund's core holding strategy is to maintain a 60-40 ratio in a new cap condition. In line with Fullerton's and your ex-deep investment team's view, what is the current asset allocation and the reasoning behind it? What factors guide your decision for the core asset allocation? Well, this one uh, is definitely a combination of history a historical performance of uh, 1640 as a core allocation and also our forward-looking view. Um, I'm not sure whether your viewers can see some of the uh, PowerPoint slides uh, that I have. Um, if you can go to slide 7, um, that one shows a long-term history of a 1640 portfolio. Uh, using the experience of the uh, longer history, which is more than 30 years, a 60-40 combination as a core portfolio of 60% invested in global equities, 40% invested in Asian uh, credits, can deliver a very stable uh, return of around uh, 6 to 7%. Uh, in some years, uh, stronger periods, it will be uh, uh, more than that. Uh, so over a long cycle, uh, it delivers a very steady uh, return. The emphasis here is that it must be over a long cycle because we know that uh, in 2022, uh, when both equities and bonds uh, were underperforming, the returns, of course, would be bad. And that is why it is important, while the structure is very stable, to produce long-term steady return. Individual years, there could be periods of uh, negative performance uh, or very strong performance. So investors at your end, has to give uh, patience uh, with this investment strategy to invest over a market cycle. So that is the uh, historical um, period where we designed the 60-40 concept. Now, the forward-looking view is also important. The forward-looking view is that uh, the US and China is in the middle of a very uh, difficult trade relationship, a geopolitical challenge. This means that there will be uh, sectors, there will be regions in which the equity markets may not perform well. So the other part that is incorporated in the design is that we are forward-looking. We understand that uh, because of the tensions, it is important to have a very global universe to make investment and allow us to capture growth opportunities around the world. Even though there is tension between US and China, at certain times, uh, the developed world will give us stronger performance. In other times, Asia or emerging markets will give us strong strong performance. So combining the historical <laughs> performance and the forward-looking view, we believe this 60-40 uh, core allocation can give investors a stable uh, target return of around 6 to 8% per annum. Given the fund's objective of achieving 5% annual distribution, how do you ensure the sustainability of this payout? Are they concerned about depleting the fund's capital and potentially leading to a drop in the price below its initial par value? Hmm. Thank you for the question. Uh, as I also mentioned earlier on, uh, over a market cycle, this allocation of 60-40 uh, can deliver a return close to 7 or 8% in US dollar terms. And therefore, we should be able to sustain the payout of 5%. 
But the important thing is that uh, after paying out 5%, the fund will continue to grow uh, with a, a total return of, uh, let's say, 7%. It can still cap have, enjoy capital appreciation of 2% after paying out 5%. Now, uh, this is uh, 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 emphasis on investing over a market cycle. In individual years, as I mentioned, in 2022, you can have a very difficult period, uh, but that would mean that uh, we'll be dipping into uh, initial capital value to sustain the payout. But after the difficult period of 2022, you can see already in 2023, and it is our expectation in 2024 as well, markets will rebound. With the recovery in the markets, <clears throat> we can then uh, recover the amount that's been paid out from capital and therefore continue the journey to deliver that uh, 7 to 8% return per annum. So it's very important for our investors to understand that uh, they must invest and stay invested over a market cycle. Individual years, there could be difficult years, there could be phenomenon uh, years where returns are very strong. That would allow us to average out and still pay out 5% and allow us, the investors, to continue to participate in capital appreciation uh, of between 2 to 3%. So I guess from your answer you have mentioned just now, as long as in the long run, if the total return strategy can deliver, say, 7% or higher, so giving up a 5% distribution will not impact this uh, so-called uh, below the initial par value. Hi, investors. If you have any other question for Vincent, please feel free to put down in the chat box below. We will try to address them as soon as possible. Listen, of all the mixed asset funds in the market, I can't help to find it interesting to note that the TA Total Return Income Fund predominantly invests into mutual funds and ETF. What strategies do you employ to increase exposure to a specific sector underlying asset when favorable opportunities arise? Thank you for the question. And to answer that, I think it's important to understand that our fund is very different from other uh, competing funds. Uh, in our multi-asset strategy, which is the, the main team managing the uh, program that is offered here, we actually uh, run multi-asset strategies in a very granular level. So there are four levels. Uh, firstly, we have um, choice of asset class. When do we put money in equities? When do we put money in commodities? Or when do we put money in credit portfolios? That's the choice of asset decision. Then we have country allocation decision, followed by sector allocation decision. Finally, uh, we have thematic equity investing. So that four layers of decision-making process is very important in understanding the strategy of this fund. So we make a very uh, clear investment decision, which asset class, which country, which sector to invest in. So you, you take, for example, today uh, we have a very positive view on um, global equities. We're invested both in our Fullerton funds uh, for global equity exposure, as well as ETFs. Um, so the global funds using Fullerton strategy allow us to participate in uh, stock picking, stock selection, uh, alpha or value add. So that one allows us to not only invest in the region, but also directly invest in the stocks. When do we then uh, bring in the ETFs? The ETFs is, a, is something that allow us to exercise the second and third uh, decision making that I was talking about. Uh, when we want to tilt the portfolio in terms of country, when we took the portfolio in terms of sector, that is when we use external ETFs, low cost uh, solution to maximize the value capture. So let me give you an example. Uh, our investors in the region would recognize that China is going through a very difficult period. China is a big market in Asia, but it's not the only market in Asia. There are other growth opportunities in Asia. And the two examples I can give is India, and Japan. So while our internal stock pick um, can uh, look at global opportunities, 
our country too, using ETFs like India ETF and Japan country ETF, allow us to tilt the portfolio to growth region uh, by country. We also use uh, ETFs at the sector level to tilt the portfolio to capture two very important sectors to generate a return. One is the technology sector. You may see from our fun fact sheet, we do have ETF in uh, QQQ, which is a dedicated US technology sector ETF that follows the NASDAQ. So that is one, one sector exposure. The other sector exposure that we will be adding to the portfolio is the energy sector, uh, energy companies. Uh, that's because we have a view that the oil continue to uh, escalate and go up because the economies are rebounding. So you can see that using both externally ETFs to tilt the country and tilt the sectors, we can combine with the internal Fullerton equity funds to enable the security selection alpha and value add to come across. So that's why we, um, we are very open architecture. We focus on the strategies, the four layers I talk about to add value to our clients. That's a really interesting, Vincent, that you shared that your, your portfolio managers uses ETF or mutual fund to increase, reduce, or navigate your exposure within different country and sectoral allocation. As you rightly mentioned, referring to its latest holding, the fund has limited exposure to emerging market. What actions can the fund manager take to capitalize on potential prospects in the specific securities, a specific stock? Could you provide example of such opportunities? Uh, yes, yes. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. So in Fullerton today, the top-down uh, asset allocator like uh, my team, as well as the bottom-up security selection team from our equity colleagues, uh, we are aligned. Uh, we think that there is a significant new development uh, in AI, artificial intelligence, where companies that adopt and provide this new technology to the rest of the world would enjoy very strong earnings growth so uh, very, very specific to this sector, we invest in our Fullerton uh, Global Equity Alpha Fund. There, they pick very specific uh, companies and they will include names like uh, Meta. It will include names like NVIDIA, which is uh, in the forefront of the new AI. It will also include names like um, uh, Microsoft. So those are the area of... Uh, very specific concentration of exposure in technology stocks. But beyond that, we also have uh, exposure in uh, Louis Vuitton, which is a European stock, because we believe that uh, in a difficult uh, environment, companies like this selling to the high-end segment of the markets, of consumer markets, will continue to enjoy very stable and expanding margins. But it's not just technology stocks and um, luxury items. We are also invested in uh, BlackRock, uh, which is a financial uh, company uh, because of their very strong global position and they are expected to do well to be able to extract value by selling their financial services uh, globally. So these are examples that we can control within Fullerton because we invest in, in our uh, internal funds where we can uh, go down to individual companies to extract value. For the ETFs that I, I just talked about, we're only focusing on country and sectors, but with our internal files, we can go down to company levels. And that combination is indeed very powerful in terms of our ability to generate returns for our investors. That's refreshing that you have shared that the fund managers utilize both uh, top-down and bottom-up strategies. So far, we have been mostly talking about equity portion. Let's look into the fixed income space for this fund. Given the investment horizon for the next, say, 6 to 12 months, what type of bonds are you considering? Would you be looking at U.S. treasuries? And how do you plan to accept and include these assets within the portfolio? Um, so, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I think the question relating to the uh, bond allocation is very important because there are two drivers. One is the market cycles and then the other one is policy action. For the market cycle, we can see very well that the equity market and the bond market are giving different interpretation. 
The equity market is pricing in a full recovery in the US economy. That's why you can see globally the Nikkei, Japan Nikkei, the Indian Sunsex, which is the Indian stock market index, as well as several European equity market indices, they're fully recovered to the all-time high. Uh, but in the bond market space, the yield curve is inverted because the central bank are fighting inflation. And the inversion of yield curve suggests that the bond market uh, participants are pricing in a recession. So this, two discon this disconnect between the two markets actually provides an opportunity for us to be heavily invested overweight in equity. So the fund has a core exposure of 60% equity, 40% credit. Today, we are more than 70% in equity. We are participating in the e recovery in the equity markets. As for the bond portion, it is now very small, very low. Uh, when will we make the allocation to fixed income? Uh, it will happen when central bank starts to pause and actually cut interest rates. Our house view is that the central bank, particularly the US Federal Reserve, will keep interest rate high all the way until middle of 2024. And then in the second half of next year, they will cut interest rates. Now, when that happens, the portfolio will benefit a lot if we have a lot of long-dated US government bond duration in the portfolio. So investors in this fund can expect us to slowly, over the next 12 months, move our equity allocation overweight towards the bond allocation duration overweight. And we will be heavily uh, uh, exposed to long-dated US government bonds by the middle of next year. This is a very important feature of the fund. It allows us the flexibility to change the allocation mix uh, uh, very meaningfully from almost 70 to 80% equity at one extreme today. And you can expect the fund to be more than 60% in fixed income uh, towards the second half of next year. So this is uh, our view on the interest rate cycle. It is policy driven and the Fed is the determinant on, on when is the best time to allocate to bond duration, which we expect to be sometime in the middle of next year. Here comes my last question, Mr. Considering that income distribution doesn't significantly impact overall clients' total return, could you elaborate on the advantage of this income distribution feature in terms of assisting clients in achieving their financial goals? Okay, this. thank you for the question. Uh, I think I'll answer that in uh, two or three perspectives. One is that the fund uh, targets a total return uh, of the portfolio, which is between 6 to 8% in US dollar terms. Total return comes from two parts. It comes from uh, income. Income is from uh, coupon from the fixed income portion as well as dividend from the equity portion. That's one part. The other part is capital appreciation of the uh, portfolio. So together be uh, between income and uh, capital appreciation, we have total return. So because we target 6 to 8% total return, our fund is able to sustain a 5% payout leaving behind 2-3% to further capital appreciation that our clients can enjoy by being invested in the fund. So this is important because after taking the distribution, after receiving the distribution, they can see the growth in their investment uh, at a 2-3% to per annum. So that's the first point. The second point which is quite unique in, in this uh, partnership uh, with, with the bank is that we're making available to our investors a monthly payout. So this is a very important for investors uh, making their retirement planning, uh, making their financial planning. While they have something invested for the long term, every month they can receive income for their spending needs to meet their expenses. So I think this is an important feature of the fund that can allow the investors to uh, extract uh, dividends uh, from the distribution, that's 5%. Uh, it's 5% per annum, therefore it's 5% divided by 12 on a monthly basis. And this monthly distribution is important for our clients, for our investors, who will continue to receive distribution while enjoying capital growth in their underlying investment. So this is a feature that is uh, special in our partnership with the bank uh, to allow our investors the ability to take home money every month to meet their expenditure, to meet their expense, while enjoying capital appreciation 
in their original investment. Let me move on to the final point, the third point. Uh, the unique feature of this fund is that it's invested globally and it is very flexible. This combination is very powerful. Uh, investing globally meaning we can avoid the difficult, challenging markets in China for now and invest in very strong performing sectors like technology sectors in the US. That global universe gives us the opportunity to add value. The flexibility to change the weights between equities and bonds allow us to squeeze as much uh, performance from the equity market this year and then we'll transfer that value creation in fixed income long duration bonds uh, in the second half of next year. So the flexibility to switch between equities and bonds is the other unique feature that will benefit our investors. So in summary, the three points is that total return allows the investors to participate in growth in capital appreciation as well as income. And the monthly distribution allow our investors to take home money every month and enjoy further capital appreciation of the underlying investment. I, I hope that the uh, explanation on the three uh, features of how this fund can meet the client's requirement uh, have addressed the question uh, that was raised. Thank you for your question. For those investors that is facing the challenge of choosing between equity and fixed income allocation, the TA Total Return Income Fund presents an intriguing solution. Thank you very much for your time today, Vincent. We greatly appreciate your valuable insights and shared today. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. At RHP Bank, we recently introduced the concept of an income distribution portfolio anchored by four essential pillars. They are core, stabilizer, diversifier, and booster. Tailored to your risk appetite, these funds can be mixed and matched to create a portfolio that offers potential monthly distribution. To explore how this fund can be effectively utilized to align with your risk profile, we encourage you to connect with your trusted RHB Bank Relationship Manager. For further updates on RHB Bank's other financial resources, including money, chats, and podcasts, please visit our RHB Bank Merch website. <music>